Are you praying for me? Thank you so much. Uh, look at Luke chapter number 15. Thank you. Luke chapter number 15. I see my guys back there. Some of y'all, bless you. I asked about y'all this week. Good to see y'all. Give me a shot of water. A little water. Look at verse number 11, chapter number 15, St. Luke. Are you there? Thank you. Verse number 11, and he said, a certain man had two sons. You know the text. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living, his living, his living. And he invited, divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, in that land. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. It's funny how people treat you when you run out. <laughs> Verse number 17, and when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. My God. My God. I'm going to use for thought. You got what you wanted and lost what you had. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that this word be an eye-opener. I pray that this word be challenging to our minds, our hearts, our spirits, even our souls. In your holy name I pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. When God gave me this particular text to teach and or to preach, all of the above, somewhat rend or torn in my heart and in my spirit. Because I know that it is profoundly true. This is one of the great agonies and challenges of our God especially as it relates to his people. It's us with our anxious selves, us and our personal desires, us putting before God the wants, the desires that we have without really taking into account the cost. We want it. We want it. And many of us, God agonizes because many times we want it before we're ready. We want it before 
its time to everything. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, there is a season and a time for every purpose under the sun. We and our greed and our hunger and our thirst as human creatures, sometimes we're willing to fasten our lives to something out of season. Uh -huh. it's, it's like bearing fruit. All fruit are not good all the time. We want it. And we want it now. We are referred to many as the now generation. The instant society. We want it now. Many times we go before God and we put God on the clock. You have this much window to operate out of and if you don't do it in the time frame that I've set for myself, God, I'm going to have to pack my stuff and go someplace else. <laughs> Maybe I've gone over there and served me a little Buddha. Maybe I grab hold to some other religion, religious philosophy. That maybe that God will give me what I so desire. Because I want mine now. Now. You have to be careful. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. That's why so many of my sisters get in trouble because they get anxious for a man. I'm not going to go down that road. That's just food for thought. Get anxious that you want him at any cost. You see him over in the produce section at Crocus. Lord, if he buy an orange, I believe that's the one. Yeah, you see him packing a huge, as y'all would say, watermelon. <laughs> I'm down south. I used to say it too. It's water, melon. And you saw him tote this huge monstrosity of a melon on his shoulders and his triceps was bulging beneath. And you said within your mind, God, that must be him. <laughs> yes. We get, we get anxious. We, we get anxious. We want it. And we want it now. Now. And this is the case and point in the narrative. This young man went to his father. And if you don't mind, I'm not for sure if this is the one messenger or two messenger. This young man, along with his elder brother, went to his father and said unto his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that befalleth me. Give me my money. And it's tough. It's tough, Mother Dabney, when as a parent, you're giving your child something that they ain't ready for. They want you to throw them the keys. And you throw it to them knowing that Junior is about as responsible as a turkey. That's the generation that we live in just to please them. When is it? When did it start that the children are dictating what's going on in the house? When did that start? Hallelujah. My son years ago told his mother, said, I don't want you to go in my room. I said, you don't have no room. You only live here. When you pay rent, then you can say you got some room. All the rooms up in here, I'm the owner. Y'all don't like me right now. That's all right. 
Wait till Kingston grow up. He gonna tell you that. This my room, my room, my room. Close my door, my door, my my door. Boy, I close this door and dare you to open it. I understand this modernistic thinking today. I know you think you go call child p protective services after service and, and report me. I'll give you the number. And he went to his father requesting his money, his portion of the good. Now watch the text. The text says, and he divided unto them his living. His living. You're going to discover later on in the text how he squandered what his father gave him. And it's because, I believe, dear hearts, he had no vested interest. See, you can always spend somebody else's money. Oh yeah, it's not hard when you don't have any vested interest. It's easy to spend money fast when you didn't work for it. Oh, can I talk about this today? It's easy. And we need, we need, we need to help these young people to understand money. My mama used to say it like this. She said, money don't grow on trees. Do I have any old school saints up in here? Money don't grow on trees. And kids will come and ask you, don't know how many bills you got, how much money you got in the bank, and ask you to buy them a $400 pair of tennis shoes. And you go get a part-time job at 7-Eleven, 7-Eleven just to get them a $400 pair of tennis shoes and they making a D at school. The devil is alive. Can I talk about this a minute? He, he divided unto them his living, his, his money. Can I help somebody up in here? Teach your child to value a dollar. Teach your child to value a dollar. He had no vested interest. He didn't sweat. He didn't work a lot of man hours for it. His father divided unto them his money. His money. Look at the text a little further. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, grabbed his grip. My son one time go run away from home. And he came downstairs with all this stuff in luggage. <laughs> Y'all getting where I'm going right now? <laughs> he, he come walking down there, big suitcases. I said, oh no, we don't, that luggage belonged to me and your mama. You, you go in there and get some of them uh, Tom Thumb paper sacks. No, 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 you ain't going to run away with luggage in your hand. Some of y'all don't like me, but that's, I'm going to help you in a minute. Gathered all his things and took his journey into a far country. Watch this. And there he wasted his substance with riotous living. And there he wasted his substance with riotous living and I'm so glad that the writer was shrewd enough to state in the text that he wasted his substance and not his money. Someone got in the theological debate with me and they said well uh, uh, what happened was but pastor that that when he got all that money that money changed him and I, I strongly disagree because money does not change a person. Money reveals a person. Because if you have prudent character, you will still be prudent with money. 
a- amen. If you're stingy, you're going to be stingier. He didn't just lose money, the hearts. He lost his substance. He went away to a far country and there he wasted, watch this, wasted his substance. He wasted it. It's a sad commentary to see so many people and it's breaking my heart, their heart. It's rending, it's tearing it apart. I've gone many days driving up and down different parts of the city and it grieves my heart. And some of you may have seen this. It grieves my heart to see so many people who are just wandering aimlessly. Aimlessly, no, no sense of direction, no, no, no thriving toward a better life. Just, just wake up and whatever happens, it happens. No real concern about the future. No real concern about what, the, the height or the depth that they may reach in life. Just, just one more day to get up and smoke another joint. One more day to get up and eat another box of chicken. One more day to just get up and run the streets. One more day to just get up and do nothing. Wasting. Your substance, your substance, all that God has invested in you from your mother's womb. Every person in this room has something to offer. Every person in this room has something to offer. It does not matter your age, your pedigree, your background. It does not matter. Everyone in this room has something to offer. And many of us are wasting our substance but riotous living, uncontrolled living, unbridled living, wasted his substance, his substance, his substance. I cringe when I see people spend an, an exorbitant amount of time wasting their substance. Wasting all that you've invested in you, wasting it. Wasting your substance on a man who don't love you. Wasting your substance. Wasting your substance. Your substance. You should value you. You should value what's inside of you. I understand that this message is not for everybody. I'm just going to help the one that it's for. You should value your substance. I value what God has put in me. I don't cast my pearls before swine. I value. You should value. You're beautiful. God has fearfully and wonderfully made you. I, y'all didn't come to hear this, did you? God has fearfully and wonderfully made you. And you're connected with somebody that's devaluing you. Devaluing you. I feel too good about what God has invested in me to let you treat me like a dog. I'm not going to do it. I'm not qualified by God to do it. I value what God has put in me. I know I'm not tall. I ain't going to never be tall, but I still value my shortness. See, he's too short. I mean, he's too short. See, I like tall, six feet and above. Oh, whatever. Whatever. I'm six feet now. But you think I'm going to let you put me down because you don't like short men? Go find your tall one then. If you don't want me, don't talk to me. Go ahead, free yourself. That's not in the Bible. That's Fantasia, 19. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tell somebody real quick and tell them, I value me. 
You stop walking around here with your head hung down because some man has devalued you and told you you can't make it without them. Oh, the devil, the liar. You may not have them, but if you got God, my God, my God. If you got God, God can help you better than any man can help you. I need somebody up in here. Tell him, he, Johnny is gone, but God is still with me. Lucille is gone, but God is still with me. I dare somebody to give God a silly praise sitting down like you're glad God is still with you. God is still with you. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I didn't come to do that. I come to talk to you. He wasted, mother, his substance with out of control living. Listen to this. Let me break it down to you. I mean, had no control over what he did. Anything that came to mind, he did it. He did it. Watch this. He did it because he was being influenced by those of that country. Uh huh. If you want to know who you are, watch who's running with you in that country. Oh yeah. You in a far country. Running with God knows what. Doing God knows what. You see the hearts. It ain't how high you jump on Sunday. It's how straight you walk when you come back down. Some are spending and wasting the substance with riotous living. Uncontrolled living. Got people in your life provoking you and convincing you to do things. Watch this. That's beneath your character. That's I don't do certain things because that's beneath who I am. Some of y'all sitting here looking at me like, you know, God, I wish I'd have went to another church today. <laughs> Too late. Because if you get up and move and leave, we going to know he was talking about you. <laughs> Wasted it on riotous, uncontrolled living. I hear people say, well, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it right. I'm pray for me, preacher, because I'm going to get myself together. You are 57 years old. Now, at what point, at what point are you going to get it together? You're 62. You are not a player. <laughs> Henry, pray for him. I just need, I just point your hand at pass and pray for him. You, you, or you, 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 listen. You are not a player. I'm going to tell you young dudes something. You ain't no player either. How you going to be a player and ain't got no money? You still standing at your mama's garage. You're talking about you're a player. Well, y'all pray for me in the back because Dante, I can't get no amen down front. You know. Can I get some pre- uh, Can y'all pray for me back there Because down front It is quiet Even the elders are quiet <laughs> Collins None of these elders have said amen If they did They were mighty low It was said amen <laughs> How you go How you go qualify yourself As a player And can't even pay your bills don't even have a car. You ladies are desperate. How you go have a man living in your house and he ain't paying no bills? He's not a player. He's just playing you. 
Because if I was a woman, you're not going to have your stinky feet up in my house and ain't helping with these bills. Go buy some groceries, buy something. Go down to Tom Thumb and at least get a pack of pork chops and some light bread and come on back. But I'm not going to feed your hungry tail. And uh uh-oh, what did I just say? I dare you to tell somebody, not over here. Boy, it is quiet in this sanctuary. I have shut the women's department down. What time I got, Patrick? Time for me to go. These elders are down here looking at their watch. Elder, look, Elder Jackson just looked at her watch. Oops, oh boy, look at the time. How time fly. Waste it, Michael, your substance. You should value what God has invested in you and you don't just give it away to just anybody. We got to teach these young girls, hallelujah, to wait. Don't just open your legs to anything passing. We need some of these mothers to start doing that. The reason the mothers can't do it is because the mothers are trying to live a fast life. You can't help them to keep their legs closed when yours is wide open. And I want to put this on social media because some of y'all need to hear it too. Your children got too many uncles. You're confusing them. Wasted his substance with riotous living wasted his substance with riotous living wasting wasting it with uncontrolled unbridled living conducting yourself in a way that's not producing unto you that which you so desire. Riotous living. One sister told me, said, Bitch, I just seen them keep attracting these, these, these men, they no good. They, and I looked at her. I just looked at her. Because it takes certain kind of bait to attract certain kind of fish. And, 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 and I'm looking at you. And I see more flesh than clothes. And you don't want men to look at you that way? Well, we can't help it. And we ain't looking at it because we are admiring it. We're looking at it because we're trying to figure it out. Now, I wish to God, I wish to, I wish y'all would sit and act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Because you sit in the mall and everywhere else. I mean flesh just hanging out. How you gonna not see all that? It's it's plan out, right? I don't appreciate him looking at me like that. Well, I don't appreciate you all in my face like that. Boy, I can't get no amen up in here. I, I don't 
would appreciate that. Having to look the other way. How you doing? Fine. You okay, brother pastor? Fine. You okay, bishop? Bishop is fine. Bishop just wants you to go on. Because bishop is a man that's trying to be saved. Sanctified. <laughs> Why y'all tripping? Why y'all tripping? You know it's true. Amen. Just because I'm a man of God don't mean I don't have eyes. I'm not blind. Wasting. You're wasting the value. You're presenting. You're presenting yourself in a way that's causing, that's causing your substance to be wasted. There's more to you than this. You got a brain. You can think. David, I'll teach this thing that you can think. You have more to offer. You have more to offer than apparently you think. I was listening to Morning Joe and they was talking about, uh, Mika was talking about, she's doing a seminar teaching women how to present themselves in a way to get promotions and raises in their occupation. And she said, you don't go in asking for an increase like they're doing you a favor by giving it to you. You go in understanding and knowing that you're worth it. I want you to do something for me. And I want you to help you, male or female, I want you to tell a woman, tell them, you're worth every penny, girl. Do something for me, ladies. Ladies, I want you to stand on your feet and tell any woman in there, you tell them, you are worth everything they give you. You're worth it. I'm preparing a symposium as we speak for all of my spiritual daughters because I want to help you going forward. You are valuable. It's time that women in America get their just due. I speak now prophetically to every woman in this room. I speak promotion and increase for every woman in this room. Sheila, what's wrong with mother? Huh? Oh. She's okay? All right. You know, I should set this mic down. Amen. I love y'all. And we don't come to church and be attacked by the enemy. Not at this church. Be seated. Let me go back to where I was. Wasted your substance on where. Let me get off this. Uh, I see now y'all want me to get off that, don't you? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You're looking at, oh, Pastor, can you go on something else? I see you. Go on something else. And apparently, it's obvious in the text that he had substance. Obvious. That it has substance. Because how can you lose what you never had? It's obvious that he has substance. You have substance. Don't lose it. You have substance. Don't waste it. You have substance. Don't just give it away to just any old body. A few weeks ago, I had the honor of, of remarrying my spiritual son and daughter. And I've been in grand settings. I mean, from the White House to uh, uh, the Vatican in, in Italy. This was perhaps, I know perhaps, this was the most exhilarating, grandest, 
wedding ceremony that I personally has ever attended. Ever attended. Stand, two of you. Stand for a minute. I don't want to imposition you, but stand. It was absolutely incredible. But what made it more compelling is I could tell they had given their substance to someone who would appreciate and value what they were bringing to the table. The way she looked into his eyes after 25 years of marriage. I'm going to close in a minute. I see you. I see you. The way she looked into his eyes, the way he bellowed out the sounds of the song and ministered to her and spoke to her spirit, her being, as he was singing to her. This is why I love you. I know I can't quite hit it, but you get the gist of what I'm saying. <laughs> and the way he looked at her while he was singing it to her, and the way he held her, and the way he danced with her, told me that he was giving his substance to someone that was giving her substance back to him. Yeah. I want to give my substance to someone that I know He's giving it back to me. Amen. This is why I love you. <laughs> Ooh. Because. Am I helping anybody up in here? Don't waste your substance because time is passing you by. While you're wasting it, time is passing you by. Wasted his substance on riotous living. And when he had, the text says, spent all. When he had spent all, he had nothing left. And it's tough. You got to be careful when you're living riotously because you mess around and you ain't got nothing left. You've given all this to this person and you ain't got nothing left to get nobody else. And here's a person God has put in your life to wear at you, to love you, and you ain't got nothing else to give because you've wasted it on foolishness. text says that those of that country who he had adjoined himself to when he ran out check it out when he ran out he sent him in the back to feed the swine dirty nasty filthy swine go feed my hog while feeding them what he so despised see it's hard it's hard it's hard when you've been when you've been feeding on shrimp ectufe papa does Oakland shrimp ectufe Oxtails dipped in butter. <laughs> Elsa, oh, no, 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 yeah, whatever. She dipped in butter. You're just so bougie. You know, just work with me a minute. Just work with me. When you're used to dining on delectables that challenges and, and uplift the palate, the taste buds, when you wine and dine in the most exquisite environments, filet mignon, that you can cut with a butter knife. 
You chew it so it melts in your mouth. And then all of a sudden, you can't buy a McDonald hamburger. Now, you standing on the corner with a sign. Anything you got. And here he was. Not being put in the position himself, but someone whom he had hung with. Broke bread together. Club together. Mm, party together. Everybody there, big spender. They were at, they were at, 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 at Lucille's place. Y'all a trip, you know what I mean? Y'all a trip. Act like y'all know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, raining. Oh, you know what I'm talking about, ladies, raining. When he walk out and six pack, ooh, dance liquidnasia, dance, dance sex with chocolate, dance. And he had the nerve to come over and sit in your lap. You really start raining. You took them, put them ones back in your purse and took out a, a roll of twenties. And those who were there with him, day after day, week after week, weekend after weekend, and they were spending, they were partying, they were having a good time, they were having a good time. And, and when he looked at, at what he was about to eat and thought about what he had, he got what he wanted. But he lost what he had. But that good news, he was able to get it back. But he couldn't get it back, watch this, until he came to himself. Do something for me and say it as loud as you can to somebody. Tell them, Wake up and smell the coffee. Come to yourself. It's time for you to do something with your life. It's time for you to make an impact. It's time for you to make a difference. I said I wasn't going to preach, but I feel this thing down in my sanctified soul. I want you to tell somebody one more time, tell them, wake up. It's time for you to do more with your life. You have more to offer. You have more to bring to the table than what you're bringing to the table. Your life must be about more than just you. I feel like preaching this thing. I dare you to shake somebody's hand real quick like you're about to shake it out. I said, wake up and smell the coffee. You have more to offer. I'm just about there. I'm just about there. If you're watching, do something more with your life. He would have filled his belly with the husk that the man gave him. But when he came to himself, watch this, and I'm closing. This is what he said to himself. In essence, he said, Marsha, I'm, I'm here. Why am I doing this? <laughs> the servants in my father's house. <laughs> I 
but more than this and then some. Y'all have a wonderful life. I'm going back to my father's house. I don't have to have a title. I don't have to have a position. I don't even have to have a room. I just want him to forgive me. And I want him to know I'm sorry. I've sinned against you. I've done wrong. Can I just serve in your house? Over to God. But his father, while he was on his way back, looked out in the field and his son was still afar off. Christy, he got happy. He said, go feed, kill the fatted calf. It's time for us to really have a party because my son has come back home. Somebody in this place today, you need to come back home. You need to come back to the Father's house. It doesn't matter what you did. Just because that's what you did, that does not mean that's who you are. I don't have much time. But if God has spoken to you through this little dissertation and you believe in your heart, it's time for me to come back home. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that you backslid, no, you've even sinned. But you know you've strayed. You're not as connected to God as you once were and you believe in your heart, it's time for me to rekindle the fire of the relationship that I once had with God. I want you to come to this altar now. Hurry, dear hearts. Get out of your seat and come to this altar now. All over this building, if that's you, come to this altar now. Does not matter if you're on the program, does not matter if you carry a big family Bible. I want you to come to this altar. Come on. Come on. This is not all. This is not all. I do not believe that God gave me this message just for a handful of people. Today when you hear my voice, harder than not your heart. Young man, young lady, sir, ma'am, it's time for you to come back to the Father's house and recommit and rededicate yourself back to him. Draw nigh unto me, he said, and I will draw nigh unto thee. Get out of your seat. Come to this altar. The Lord hand carved, that's it son, hand carved this message just for you. You cannot listen to him. You can stay where you are. But you would never say that God didn't give you an opportunity to get yourself together. When I do things my way, turning my back from you.
and hold your nail scarred hand so I can see it. Yeah. Now I know I am free to just.